And then on <laughs> today's podcast, we have a wonderful man known as Vincent Sear. Thank you so much for having me here today. Vincent is going to send out a little uh, thing to everyone and what it should sound like. But what I'm concerned about is whether or not Sear is going to be um, finding himself accused of hitting more people. And what word it needs, words it needs to contain for YouTube to see it. If I was angry, I could make a dedicated video, blah, 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 whatever. Get the commentary community involved and... and be destructive and that's not the type of fucking person that I am and we're trying to get his video taken down and then another video taken down professionally by an agency the drama is 90% due to Sears Russian skinwalker girlfriend Dasha what the hell I, I don't know who this guy is he just kind of takes orders and is being directed by his girlfriend I told him that I'd ruin his life because I would if he takes a fucking British cunt I'm sorry over his best friend He's absolutely right. I stood there smiling. You no, know, I shouldn't have sent her passport around. A few weeks back, someone made a threat about how Seer and Dasha groomed them when they were a teenager. Vinny goes on to say, Seer is losing his mind. And here's to bless your efforts. She sent her a picture of me uh, in my underwear. Vincent really can't get over how smart you are. OTK, or One True King, is a streaming org that brought together multiple popular internet personalities, mostly streamers like Mizkif, Asmongold, Jay Schlatt, and Sfan, to collaborate and make content under one banner. And on October 11th, 2021, a new member was added to the party. Congratulations to our friend, Seer, the newest house member. Where is he? Seer. Hey, Seer! Seer! Seer, we just... <laughs> Welcome to OTK! <laughs> Welcome. Wait, am I being forced to be into the organization? OTK Sear, everybody. Oh, OTK Sear. He said yes. Congrats, he man. said yes. Vincent Sear, or just Sear, is a 31 year old Twitch streamer with around 450,000 followers on Twitch and around 200,000 on Twitter. As someone with a prominent internet presence, Multiple info pages have popped up to document his career. How they got into streaming. Seer got his start in filming skits during high school when he got into drama and film and realized that he wanted to go into entertainment when he grew up. In 2006, he started uploading skit content to his YouTube channel and then moved to LA after graduating from university in 2009 in hopes of making it as an actor. Associated with, he collaborated with Sawyer Hartman on a celebrity impersonations video in August of 2013. He and Hartman also worked together on the film The Parallax Theory. But hold on, something's missing. Missing from all of these descriptions. I recently discovered Seer through Mizkif, thought he was funny and I tossed him a follow. Didn't really think much of it, but it wasn't until recently that I fell down a rabbit hole involving Seer and his checkered past, to put it lightly, on YouTube. Because Sawyer Hartman isn't the only internet personality with a famous birthdays page that Seer is associated with. That is your idol, isn't it? If I were to have an idol in my life, it would be Christian Bale. Or if you had to have a father who is an actor. Christian Bale. Or a brother. Morgan or... Freeman. Oh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. He'd be your what? Your He'd grandfather? Be, uh, yeah, I guess he's more of a grandfather. <laughs> okay, we're back, folks. <laughs> From 2010 to 2016, Seer and Onision worked extensively together, some going as far as to call Seer Onision's only friend. Um, you, Seer, uh, didn't you at one point live with him? Yeah, we had we had lived together a couple times. I mean, I had stayed with him. He we had lived in the same place in LA before. Most of the videos that Onisi and Sir made together have either been privated or deleted. The oldest one I could find was from August 11th, 2010. Ah, <sighs> uh, oh, this makes no sense. How do I answer a Skype call? Damn you, fate. <laughs> Riveting stuff. The duo would continue to make content together throughout the years, and Anistian would even help Seer out financially. It's unclear the extent to which Seer knew about Onision's exploits while the two were friends. Some people speculate that he knew everything and turned a blind eye because he lived with Anistian during the shallow situation, and there is a video he recorded that suggests that he isn't totally oblivious to the concerns surrounding Onision. I've been wanting people to know about Onision for some time now. He left his computer unattended and I changed his password, which has allowed me to upload this video in order to talk about 
who Onision really is. As you know, Onision got a divorce in 2010, and I really disagreed with how he treated his ex-wife. He moved on within a week after his ex-wife, which shows you Onision has absolutely no capacity to love somebody. Having worked with Onision myself, I'm ashamed, but maybe making this video could redeem me in some way. Now, as you know, I always avoid drama, with Onision cuddling someone while he's still married, and giving them a full body massage. And I couldn't help but personally be extremely disgusted, so I tricked him into flying me out to make videos so I could do this. And I already have an Uber on the way to take me back to the airport. I just wanted to leave this message to make sure, as I am his only friend, that Onision is, in fact, the garbage that everybody says that he is. You guys have no idea how much it hurts me to see the people that have gone in and out of Onision's life, the women he's yelled at, and just generally treated poorly. They all deserve better. And if you're a woman watching this, know that you deserve to be treated better too. If you're ever with a guy like Onision, you need to leave that abusive asshole. Now, now I'm personally sending funds to his wife Lainey to make sure she has the means to get out of this abusive relationship with Onision. So don't worry, Lainey will be okay. I'm making sure of that. And to everybody who's made anti-Onision videos, to everyone who's run anti-Onision blogs, you guys have really done the internet a service by trying to expose who he really is. Um, but rest assured, this is the end of Onision. Sir, I can't access my channel. Why? Why not? I don't know. It's fuck, like I keep putting the same fucking password and it's not working. Uh, try the- try your old passwords. Why the fuck- why would I try my old passwords here? Because sometimes you forget that those were your passwords. You now, this is obviously a sketch, but it still hints towards how much Seer really knew. However, at the same time, people have claimed that Shiloh, a victim of Onision, has cleared Seer of all responsibility. Although, with Shiloh deleting her Twitter account, I don't really have any screenshots of this claim. And honestly, while Seer can be criticized for a lot of things that will be talked about later on, I'm not comfortable with definitively saying that he knew because there just isn't enough evidence and I think that he should be afforded the benefit of the doubt in this case because of the severity attached to accusing him of knowing and doing nothing about Onision. Moving past that, the duo will be active for only half a decade before their relationship eventually fell apart. They had a bit of a rocky relationship for multiple years with their arguments sometimes spilling up to Twitter. In 2013, for example, Seer called Onision unpredictable and problematic during a fallout, although their friendship would ultimately mend after this incident. It wouldn't be until 2016 that there was the final nail in the coffin. As expected, when you get involved with Onision for any amount of time, things uh, never end well. I'm bored. Greg, this is drama! I'm fucking bored. He's got popcorn! I'm bored. It's Killer Kingstar! Let's get running in the night. But hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're gonna be talking about probably one of the most oversensitive pussies on this entire fucking website, aka Onision. Or better yet, his secret code name, Super Onion Man. Politics. Widely disliked and for good reason. Politics are usually a main source of division among people, and incidentally, this is what it's been attributed to killing the friendship between Seer and Onision. It was the 2016 voting season, a very volatile time period, and the two YouTubers who lived in California, well, you know, they, they voted. Onision support Hillary Clinton and Seer voted for a third party candidate named Jill Stein. He's acting like I ended the friendship, but this is like about maybe the fourth or fifth time he's ended his friendship with me over something petty. And like, wow, everybody really? thought that I voted for Donald Trump. He, he was like, you're basically voting for Trump. And then everybody thought I was voting for Trump. <laughs> That's I didn't the whole vote thing for Trump. was so stupid. I, <laughs> like, I live in California. It's a, blue, it's a blue state. I voted for state issues because I know yeah. that that would affect the state. I didn't vote for the two-party system because I had the luxury of doing that in my state. I knew yeah. that Donald Trump would not win in the state of California. And he was just like, you're, you're, the, you're why Trump won. I'm like, no, I'm not. I voted for state <laughs> issues. Hillary was going to win California anyway. Study the fucking electoral system. <laughs> they went back and forth on Twitter for a bit. Nothing really that important. Although it should be mentioned that Nistian brought up that he had always helped Seer out and made that public just so he can get one over on him. Seer posted a screenshot of a DM he received from Nistian where he called Seer a leech. And Seer requested that Nistian take down all of their collaborations together. And shortly after that, Nistian blocked Seer. And then because it was 2016 YouTube, they naturally both made diss tracks with each other. My name is Greg, obsessed with the freshest, and by the freshest, I mean the youngest. If it happens in my life, then it happens on my camera. If it happens on my camera, then it happens in my wallet. I have no friends because I'm too busy drawing how I fucked up every relationship. Onision, in a video a year later, recalling the situation, would suggest that their friendship could have mended after the politics spat. 
but Seer went after his family, making disparaging comments about his husband, who is transgender. They then post this misleading statement about why our friendship broke up. I actually unfollowed Seer on Twitter because of a political difference, and then I terminated our friendship because he brought my family into it. I've said this again and again, but people like you don't like the truth because it doesn't suit your agenda. But who needs friends when you got your family? I'll do what it takes to be as rich as I can be, so this week on YouTube I think I'll fuck Bambi, then dress up as Bambi, then go fuck a tranny. My life's a bad hand and cards against humanity. I don't know if that one worked well. I guess this could be a valid reason, but Nissan's diss track against Seer just calling him gay and a bunch of slurs, so I don't really know how you can claim any sort of moral high ground. Yo, my name's Seer. I love to suck I also suck at making songs because I'm not that quick. I have a Russian prostitute as a girlfriend, yeah. She only costs 50 bucks because I ain't got no cash, no. And my mama loves to suck my d it's a fact, don't look it up, trust me on that sh Seer is a fa- and he fa Sometime later, they would both apologize to each other, but they were never friends again, and Anisian claims that this is not the fault of him or Seer, it's actually the work of a third party. And normally when Seer and I have a falling out, we're mad at each other for a little while, and then we make up, and then we move on, and we make more videos. Well, unfortunately, this time around, there's someone standing in the way. With this person sitting over my ex-best friend's ear, constantly whispering in it, talking about how terrible she thinks I am, I'm not sure how a friendship could ever happen. It would seem in the grand scope of things, Vince and Seer would get off lucky. However, his luck would run out very quickly as he entered 2017 because it, it it definitely was not his year. You consider yourself a comedian. I think that's why I picked it up. No, absolutely not. You, but I mean, 90% is the stuff uh, you and Edwin, and by the way, Edwin's freaking fan. Is he's your roommate, correct? Yeah. There are four main people to remember going forward. There's Seer, of course, his girlfriend at the time, Dasha, his roommate and fellow content creator Edwin, or Edwin's Generations, and his former girlfriend Mina, uh, Sears that is. To lay the groundwork, Edwin and Sear were friends since 2009. Okay, this might be a little bit too far back. It really began in 2016, during which Sear and Nissan were still friends. To fit this into the timeline of what we already know, Sear dated Mina in the time period around May and ended up cheating on her with Dasha. After breaking up with Mina, Sear alleged that she would go on to harass him online, contacting a bunch of his previous girlfriends and even Asking him if iDubbbz was single? She just kept going on the internet. She contacted all of my ex-girlfriends. Um, every girl that I... So many girls that I had even just spoken to that I didn't even have a relationship with. And she was like, I'm so sorry that you had to interact with Vince's here. He's so evil. She went and contacted people in my real life, my personal life. She... It was really fucking awkward. Um, and then, like, one day she texts me and she's like, Oh, do you know about um, iDubbbz? I have the text messages. She was like, do you know about iDubbbz? And I was like, what about him? She was like, do you know if he's single? And I was like, I don't know. Why don't you ask him yourself? And text messages of her saying to somebody, oh yeah, all you have to do is make uh, Instagram accounts and fan accounts of you shipping them together. And usually it'll get the YouTuber's attention. So when I put this together, I was like, this is really fucking weird. So iDubbbz, messages me and he's like uh who is this person she seems really fucking weird uh she seems kind of fanny and i was like yeah i don't know i broke up with her so i don't know what to say in a video response later on edwin would counter this by saying that all she did was tell people that seer cheated on her mina would also say that she was messaging his exes because she was confused about how things ended and just want closure moving past that in august of that year seer and edwin would move in with each other to make content Edwin noted that Dasha would come over often and ended up moving in in November, around the time that he ended his friendship with Onision. Also in November was when Dasha talked Seer into making up with Mina over a call. Dasha and Mina were already cool by then, and it was decided in this call that Mina would be bought a plane ticket to come to LA and stay with Seer, Dasha, and Edwin. One time, I was FaceTiming her and told her, you and Vincent should make up. Vincent owes you an apology and, um... One time they FaceTimed and Vincent apologized to everything both have uh, been through. She cried, he cried. It was very emotional. Vincent and Mina made up and he thought the best gift he could give her is a ticket to LA. 
and I was like, oh my god, let's do that. Let's get her a ticket. Let's buy her a ticket, a round ticket to LA. She was so happy, you guys. I was so excited. I was so fucking happy. And Vincent was happy. It's a ticket to LA. It was never his gift. It was always her gift. She was always messaging me prior to me and Vincent having that FaceTime call saying, come to LA, when you're coming to LA. And then she convinced him to get me a ticket. It was never what she just said. She calls him and I'm there without him knowing. And she's just, you know, she's just shouting at him, telling him what he's, what, what happened around that time wasn't, wasn't her. This is so hard to talk about. She just basically makes him feel bad for what happened and makes him apologize for it. And basically understand what he did wasn't right at the time. And he should have probably said more to me. And he felt very bad because it was all very high emotion. So she ends up telling him that they should buy me a ticket to come out to LA. She says that, but then she also says that, she, that he should call me right now, right in that moment. Even while I'm on the FaceTime, while he doesn't know, she says to him, you need to call Mina and apologize to her and tell her that she can come out here. I'm already crying after hearing all of this stuff and then she ends the call with me and then suddenly Vincent's calling me. So I had to pretend like I didn't even know that that call happened between them. So he's calling me and just apologizing to me about everything. Then he ends up telling me how Dasha and him want to get me a ticket to go to LA. And I'm like, you don't need to do that. And he says, no, we want to. So I'm like, I'll think on it, I think. I don't think I said like definite yes in that moment, but I accepted his apology and I was fine with everything that happened. Something to note, you know, something that was floating around before Mina was flown out from England was the accusation of Dasha taking photos that were eerily similar to Mina's, almost as if she was trying to become Mina. This is where it gets kind of weird. Sarah and I dated before Dasha and Sid dated. And at first, me and Dasha obviously didn't get along, understandably so because I was his ex. After time, I started noticing Dasha posting almost identical pictures to what I was posting. The makeup, the style, and especially the clothes. And sometimes it would be small things, but then other times it would be like from head to toe. It wasn't just me who started noticing it. My friends and my mutuals started noticing it and asking me, do you know who this is? Why is she doing this? While Mina was staying with all of them, Dasha, Mina, and Sir tried out a polyamorous relationship. Now, there are a lot of smaller details that I don't think are relevant, so to summarize this time period before Edwin left and while Mina was staying there, there were a lot of problems and fights according to Edwin. And I, I stepped away, I went to their room to, to hang out with Mina for a little bit and when we were like, I hope they're talking now, I hope they figure it out. And then we just hear them fight even worse. He explained to me how he felt so emasculated and he hadn't felt like that in a really long time and he felt like he was just screwing up, every, fucking everything up. And he asked me to go to the bathroom and I went in there and he, he was crying and I was trying to comfort him. And then he calmed down and then eventually Dasha came back in because she was also out on her own. He wasn't sure where she was but apparently she just went to Whole Foods. I let her in the apartment uh, into the into the elevator and the first thing she said is I, I, I told her I was like you you know Sears crying and really upset right and, he's, and she's like yeah because of you and I was like okay that's not what he said at all I don't care how extreme the fight was what kind of girlfriend says this to their boyfriend I never even wanted this in the first place I never liked you and cared for you in the beginning I literally thought it was just fun to fuck you and leave maybe you should have stayed with the one girl that actually cared for you holy shit but yeah no I'm sure it's a totally normal couples fight Sears response to these screenshots was that this behavior was uh, completely normal you know what happens when you get in a fight with your significant other? What do you do? You talk to your friend about it. You vent to them. You say, God, dude, she's being such a fucking bitch right now. She's saying this fucked up shit. Because when you're in a fight, you say fucked up shit to each other. It's what happens when you really care about each other and then suddenly things aren't working out. You say shit to get to each other because that's just what you do. That's just what you do. Now, at some point, the polyamorous relationship fell apart because everything was so tense. Although they did remain on the surface, friends. But that did not stop things from going south. And I told Edwin, yes, I'm fucking, I'm going to actually get you kicked out if you literally take Mina's side over your best friends. I said that to him. I'm owning up to that. I told him that I'd ruin his life because I would if he takes a fucking British cunt, I'm sorry, over his best friend. He's absolutely right. I stood there smiling. I stood there smiling as... Of course I love Mina. Of course I love Mina with all my heart. A fucking British cunt. 
On January 11th, 2017, things reached a breaking point and Seer kicked everyone out of the apartment. There are a bunch of conflicting stories and details regarding what actually happened and everyone's intentions, but there are three prevailing reasons as to why Seer had asked everyone to leave. The first is the most official story. I decided to call my brother because of all the shit that was going on here. And my brother being the guarantor of the lease was like, um, you're clearly fucked up. I want you to, um, I want you to kick everybody out of the apartment. He talked to his brother and that long story short that everybody has to go, that his brother had no idea what was going on and that everybody had to leave. There was no exact time, right, time frame, but just basically figure out a way to pack up your things and find a different place to stay at because nobody was allowed there anymore. I had so many questions because I was so confused, like, how is this possible? Because he also said that his brother had no idea that anybody was living there, like, not even me. I was like, excuse me, we, we got this place together. And he never told his family that he had a roommate, except it was a two-bedroom apartment, and none of it really added up. However, Edwin mentioned something that cast doubt on Sear's story. Nonchalantly just mentioned how the, the owner of the coffee shop told Sear that he should kick everybody out. I was like, that doesn't line up. That straight up just doesn't line up with Sears' story because Sears said that his brother told him to do that. So I'm like, why am I hearing something completely different that Sears still has not admitted to or bothered to clear up? The third explanation for why Edwin had to go comes from Sears a couple months later. Well, first, let me, let me talk about the beginning of this situation. I had asked him to leave and I was like, hey, I'm going to give you a month and a half. You know, I, I'll give you a month and a half. I just was like, I can't live with you. Nowhere in the clips of this stream upload to YouTube does Seer mention his brother or anything about the lease. Putting that aside, the fact that it looks like Seer changing his story uh, does not do anything to help his credibility. Now, Edwin was still in the apartment after Seer had asked him to leave because it wasn't like everyone had to immediately move out. Especially because Seer had said that he wanted to talk to his brother and convince him that everyone could stay. Despite this, when Seer left on a trip, Dasha messed with Edwin and Mina until they had had enough and decided to leave. And then there was times where also she would talk to me mm -hmm. and she would tell me like, oh, by the way, you should be careful of Mina. She's kind of like a parasite. She'll probably just use you, blah, 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 etc, etc. I was like, okay. I felt like she was trying to turn me against her. Of course I love Mina with all my heart. So, from what I heard, while I was gone, everything was normal. According to Edwin, Sir wasn't completely innocent either, offering Edwin's room to Mina once he was kicked out. And what I really wanted to understand was why he conspired to kick me out a second time. Sear was in complete denial of this, he acted like he didn't know any of it. And I'm telling him, dude, if you don't know any of this, then maybe you don't have enough communication with your girlfriend because literally I have so many texts, so many messages that Mina got of Dasha offering her my room. And then Sear tried to justify by saying that Dasha meant that if she ever came back to LA, she would have a place to stay. Mina was also in the room when I was having the call, so when she heard that part, she was like, uh, excuse me? Uh, Sear, how about that time where you, me, and Dasha went to the cafe and you both cashed said that I could have Edwin's room when he moved out and then he exploded he said that was a passing thought no and he yelled at her I was like holy shit okay we need to calm down but in the end he didn't want to admit that he wanted me out of the apartment so that's why I strongly believe that it was all Dasha's plan because maybe he didn't really want me out of the apartment but he obviously valued Dasha's opinion a lot more than mine then there is Dasha and Sears side they said they felt betrayed because Edwin and Mina were acting like everything was fine up until they left out of the blue no mention of Dasha's behavior or their joint plan to kick Edwin out a second time, so it ends up just being a he said, she said situation. On February 3rd, Edwin uploaded a video briefly talking about getting kicked out of the apartment by his former roommates. My former roommates, mainly one, keeps harassing me online and conveniently she wants me to keep it all private. After all, she's just, after she's already smeared my name and I, I don't think that's right, but as of now, I don't want to reveal too many details, except that they kicked me out of the apartment, and that's where I'm going to leave that for now. I think uh, maybe more will come out eventually. This video kickstarted a wave of periscopes, streams, response videos, tweets, and more, much more. And there are a couple of points that I should probably include to represent both sides of the arguments, but to be honest, they aren't very interesting, so I'm just going to throw them on screen now. What we want is blood, not honorable mentions. On January 31st, according to Mina, she was linked to a user on a forum whose activity was a little out of the ordinary, put it lightly. I noticed that this forny person was posting screen caps from my Instagram that was deleted over a month and a half ago. The pictures were from my deleted Instagram, but they weren't the original picture. Everything about the screen cap was real, just apart from the image itself. I was edited to make me look like abnormally skeletal or anorexic like it was 
it was so weird to me. I was so creeped out because I thought like, why? Why would this, why would this fawny person try to make it come across that I was editing myself to this abnormally thin way when I really wasn't? Like if you wanted to look back to my Twitter to see that original picture, it's not the same picture that this person uploaded that is trying to convince all these people that it is that. There was also other pictures that she was posting that were making me look thicker than I was. It was just so creepy to me. What really, what really made me convinced that it was probably 99.9% .9 Dasha was the fact that she, this fawny person started posting images that I have never even posted anywhere on social media before. Some of these were like outtakes of pictures I have uploaded, but they weren't the original pictures from my camera roll, edited pictures. This Fawny person has somehow got a hold of my ca a few pictures from my camera roll, edited me to either look really thin again or thicker. Basically, to be like, hey, Mina's editing herself to look this way, but really she looks this way. So even the original that this fawny person is trying to say I look like. I don't look like that. However, she did share with me Dasha's Ask FM, which was still around. Basically a Q&A page that ran from 2015 to like early 2016. This revealed a lot more juicy details about Dasha. And do you guys remember the funny person that would post dysmorphic pictures of Mina on the Pretty Ugly Little Liars forum? The one we talked about in the last video? Another really big reason why I was just sure that that funny person was Dasha was because in that forum, someone posted really old pictures of Dasha and then the funny person said, where did you get those? And then the person replied, I found them on her Ask FM. And next thing you know, the Ask FM is gone. Dasha has failed to comment on these allegations and said leveling her own accusations against Mina. Apparently, one night when Mina was drunk, Dasha walked into the bathroom and saw Mina's phone unlocked with an app for fake followers on it. Dasha noticed that these accounts on the phone were ones that had previously sent hate to her and Seer. They had also posted edits of Mina and Seer together, but they were a general nuisance. Something that she decides to add onto her story is that the accounts had been active since December of 2016, during a time when she didn't even know Seer, so she couldn't have possibly made the accounts. And you can check those accounts are have been there since what December 2016. You can check when the first post was. I didn't even know Mina or Seer back then. She repeated this point less than a week later. What fucking else did I make those accounts? Do you know when they started posting in like December or January 2016? I didn't even know Seer back then or her. And here she is saying again in live stream with Seer. I don't know exactly what they have said. What, what they said about the fake accounts, but I, and I know I say this a lot, but most of those accounts are back from what, December, January 2016? I didn't know Vincent or me, so why would I make these accounts? I don't know why she said this because it's like verifiably false. Sarah uploaded a video with her in it in August of 2016, well before she supposedly hadn't even known they existed. Edwin responded to these allegations on June 12th. So Dasha posted several videos to her social media that she tries to pass on as proof that Mina is behind at least 15 Instagram accounts that are fake. She says that one of the nights where everybody got drunk except for her because she never drank when everybody else did, she went to the bathroom and she saw that Mina's phone had been left there, unlocked. I didn't go to anybody's phone. If you're stupid enough to leave your phone on the fucking sink, unlocked, with an app open, that's her fucking fault, not mine. Like, what the fucking hell? So of course she took a look at it and she was like, oh my gosh, I recognize these fake accounts. And she took a picture of the phone and she goes on to say that a lot of these accounts have hated on her and Seer extensively. But it's whatever, it's more the hate that she gave me with them that bothers me. And this is the reason that she uses for deleting Mina's Instagram. And I should have probably done worse, but it didn't. Now something she fails to do is show proof of the hate that she received from these fake accounts. Like if the hate is so bad that it made you want to delete someone's social media, you would think that you would screenshot that or take a picture of that. I mean, you're taking a picture of someone phone want to take a picture of the hate you're receiving and the thing is that she said that she was receiving hate while Mina was still in LA so why can't we get a screenshot that's the first thing that smells fishy the second thing that smells fishy is the screen cap for this fake account called Anna Lily which this account is conveniently deleted now and she blames it on Mina of course I think the Anna Lily account is deleted because I told people about it and she obviously deleted it. Around the time that Mina was receiving loads of hate, she was also receiving some weird pages on Instagram that would like 
show these edits that look a lot like the Anna Lily edits. And these edits, of course, were mocking Mina. This is the only screen cap I have because I found it on Locale. But as you can see, Baby Dash is commenting on it. So she's enabling and encouraging the behavior that she was so against. Or did she make the image herself? Like I said, something fishy. Expose number two, this page still exists on Instagram. It's called CRX Dasha Love. As you can see, this has a bunch of edits and they're all like fangirling over Sierra and, and Dasha, but also Onision. There's like a little fan fiction there about Onision and Dasha hooking up and she's over there like, yes, kidnap, you're so funny. I don't get it, but again, the edit looks a lot like the Anna Lily edit. And that was fishy number three. Can it get any fishier than that? I think so. Dasha goes on to say that it's definitely Mina's phone because it's got the cracked screen, the same bunny case, and that if you don't believe her, you can go back to my vlogs so you can see it there. And it's true. However, what she fails to mention is is that she has two phones and that not only did she get Mina a bunny case but she got herself a bunny case so they were matching and the last thing she forgot to mention is that her phone was also cracked this is getting way too fishy now I swear this isn't my account but this is hella funny <laughs> okay now did Mina make these fake accounts it's definitely possible I think the evidence is stacked against Dasha but it's possible I guess the drama died down for the most part after June of 2017 However, away from the public eye, Dasha could just not let this go, could not let Mina go. After all, she loves Mina with all of her heart. Two people uh, DM me or message me on Snapchat and they told me like, hey, I've just liked your picture and I've commented and suddenly she's liking my picture and she's doing all this stuff and it's just, it's just weird. And while we're on the topic of love, there's a lot of love to go around because Seer loves his girlfriend a lot. And if you even talk poorly about her, he'll tell you to fall down a well head first and remain in a vegetative state for the rest of your life. This person happened to be uh, 13 years old, but good old Vince probably didn't know that. Seriously, don't dish it if you can't take it. If you want to see how horrible our relationship is on her Twitch account, you can see us playing video games together. She's clearly abusive. <laughs> I'm not somebody who's malicious or planning shit so we're obviously so our thing is we're not gonna make a video back at edwin when his video comes out all of our friends on discord and everyone i can trust will flag it for harassment new year new details edwin alleged that seer slapped dasha during a fight which is uh, why would why would you wait to share this? It feels like something you should have mentioned like a, a long time ago. In my tweet it says that both me and Mina heard him slap his girlfriend. We were in the other room and then he came out to us to cry about it and he, he said it, you know, and then she also reacted to it loudly. I have never seen Seer cry the way he did that night where he cried for at least 20 minutes consistently just feeling horrible and, and feeling so remorseful. I've never seen that in him ever before. So I, I sincerely believed him that he had never hit anybody before when he said that. So I don't think that he's going around hitting women. And now there's a timeline again, kind of. Uh, Edwin sued Seer for money owed in property that was not returned in small claims court and won. But there's something more pressing to talk about, and that is Dasha getting exposed for leaking private information to Mina. There's a forum called Lolcow, which I think someone has described as the Kiwi Farms for Women, and admins tracked her IP and discovered that she put up multiple posts being a schizo and talking to herself about just how bad Mina truly was. First off, she started a conversation asking if anyone knew Mina's real name. And by the way, the administrators of the website added a little signature to every single one of her posts. And the signature is a caricature of Dasha and how they imagine her posting on the thread. Dasha then responds to herself, saying she saw a picture of Mina's passport a while ago, saying her name was something foreign. She's having a conversation with herself. She then proceeds to ask herself if she knows the origin of Mina's last name. Lastly, she answers her original post, I'm assuming pretending to be a different anonymous poster, by sharing Mina's passport and saying, you mean this? In addition to doxing Mina, Dasha also posted her nudes, which she obtained by going through Mina's phone while she was staying there without her knowledge. She airdropped random pictures that Mina has never posted online or shared anywhere and airdropped them to her own phone. 
These are two pictures Mina calls outtakes because she never posted them online and never meant for them to be posted online. And Dasha uses them to say that Mina is not the fairest of beauties. Keep in mind, this is also after Dasha has already edited these pictures. She's edited Mina's nose and jaw. This is another picture that Mina has never posted online or shared with anyone at all. She's naked in this. This is a crime. How many pictures of Mina do you have? And, and why? Why after a year and a half of not communicating with her, do you still have pictures of her? And we know it's Dasha because she's just incompetent. Uh, for someone who makes all these elaborate plans to mess with people, she started sloppy but keeping them a secret. A couple weeks go by and the website's administrator is able to identify Dasha for posting 142 posts on the thread all defending herself in third person and talking about herself and, and insulting me and insulting Mina most of all. Also, she admitted to being the anonymous account who posted Mina's passport, so uh, there's, there's that. It's like, I mean, you know, I'm the kind of person I do things impulsively, like, you know, I shouldn't have sent her passport around. I know, I was mad at that. How relatable. Feeling angry might dox someone later. Or maybe I'll have someone else do it for me because it's just such a hassle. I know Dasha would understand because she actually instructed fans on how to send hate to Mina. She'd tell them how much they meant to her, you know, how much they were her little kitten, they were their friends. And then she'd add in there that Mina was just such a bad person. A little nudge in the right direction. One of these so-called minions came forward after realizing they'd been manipulated. I recently began to realize that she had been manipulating me by acting like I was important to her, calling me a good friend, etc. when she literally just used me to send you and Mina hate. She'd tell me word for word what to tweet and comment. She would ask me to create content to get back at you both. I only realized all this when she pretty much entirely cut me off for wanting to remain neutral and it made me feel hella shitty. This is a screenshot she sent me of a conversation she had with Dasha on WhatsApp regarding the gossip forum. And as you can see, it shows Dasha complaining that the forum wasn't going in her favor and then she was happy that Charlie would check the forms for her. Dasha said, you are the best friend I have ever had, Charlie. I'll meet Russell Miller for you. Looking back, it was pretty creepy. I'm 17 but was 16 at the time and she used to always be like, you should come visit when you're legal and tell me all this shit and it genuinely feels like low level grooming to have me do what she said. Grooming might be an extreme conclusion to stand behind with only one testimony, but I feel like I should mention that there's article slash twit longer thing was posted where the writer uh, also felt that they were groomed by Asir and Dasha, mostly Dasha though. Some standout lines are, I remember being in school at 16, locking myself in a toilet often because I felt like I had to guide a 27 year old man, Seer, out of his panic attacks. I remember midway through a convo once she told me she was in the middle of having sex while she spoke to me, again, a 16 year old. It even involved Tayo Lopez who was flirting with Dasha, <laughs> I don't know. My guest Dasha responded to this thread while it was still up on Twitter and admitted to everything and apologized. Uh, although it's unclear how involved Sear was in the more sexual side of the conversations and how involved he was in offering to fly a 16 year old out to LA. But to go back to the whole minion thing, it's clear that there is a strange relationship between Dasha and her fans, grooming aside, I guess. That sounds terrible. At first, this particular minion, someone named Letty, who was a big fan of Sear and Dasha, and was invited to their group chats, messaged Dasha, who Edwin has dubbed Julia this time around. Last year, Letty messaged Julia and said, Yo, I really want to make a video about Onision, like a full-on, with proof, everything explained kind of video. To which Julia replies, About what? Make a Mina one, lol. Ooh, I definitely need to make a Mina one with all the proof that you have of stuff, so then everything is out there. And then Julia got her director's cap, put it on, and recorded a voice note suggesting how the video should go. Let's hear it. Truly making one. Be really diplomatic about it. Like, don't insult her, nothing. Just deliver straight facts. Straight facts. Got it. Yes. This is a direct example showing that Julia has absolutely no problem using her fans as both a weapon to attack and as a shield against criticism. Because after all, it wasn't her who said those things. It was her fans standing up for her. Possible mention that I didn't ask you to do this video, that you're doing it because it's your perspective and that you feel it's like not right or whatever, you know? Take all my blame, please. I didn't help you with this at all. But don't forget, Dasha is always watching. She keeps tabs on everyone. And when the fan from the first set of clips, not Letty, decided to talk to Edwin, Dasha was right there in her DMs. So the reason why I delayed the video an extra day is because one of Dasha's former fans actually came forward and gave me a lot of information as well, screenshots that I thought was extremely necessary for the video. So I'm finishing up shooting that and then I'm gonna try to get the video up as soon as possible. I guess by this point I've already proved her character, but this is just uh, uncanny. In fact, a very similar situation occurred when Letty realized that she was being used and cut off contact with Dasha. But 
Guess who messaged her this time? It's not Dasha, it's uh, none other than Vincent Sear, our main man. Just checking in to make sure that Letty knew that Dasha deeply cared about her. Letty, how can you think that Dasha manipulated you? She literally hadn't forced you to do anything. She was only asking for help. She honestly even asked me if you should upload the video because she was worried about the hate you'd get. And I said it's up to Letty if it helps. Dasha cares about you, Letty. I don't understand how you can swap so fast like this. You understand her mental health. Please don't do this. I'm genuinely worried for her. I'm sorry you feel this way, I really am, but I know as a fact that Dasha really does care about you. She literally shows me all the photos you upload and how you inspire her makeup. You don't see what I see. I know our friendship will heavily involve this drama no matter what. I love both you and Dasha, but I need to be out of it. But why do you have to talk about it if it's private? So I think here he's referring to her tweeting about it publicly, you know, that, that she no longer wants to support them. Friends reach out to each other and sometimes they're available and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're not strong enough. I understand it's your mental health, but I honestly don't think she was manipulating you. I'm telling you, Letty, she loves you. You can't do this to her. Even if she had a falling out, she would never do this to you. Letty, please, at least talk to her about it, please. As a friend, the OG parasocial relationship. Honestly, Vincent, I think she wanted me to make the video all along. She used to tell me to make a video all the time. She'd tell me what she wanted me to add in and she wishes I'd said this and that. I'm sorry, Vincent, this whole thing is toxic. Mine and Dasha's friendship is toxic. What else was she to do? She literally had nobody to help her. No, nobody? Not even you? Like, you can't help your own girlfriend that you rely on a fan? I'm sorry you feel this way, I do, but just know that I know, and if you value my opinion in any way whatsoever, or you know that I'm not an idiot, that one- Holy shit, this is- what? That was 100% not her intention. He's like manipulating us to the max. Right, seriously, it's basically saying like, if, if you respect me in any way, and you know that I'm not an idiot, which I'm not, <laughs> then my girlfriend is not manipulating you. And just when you thought that it couldn't possibly get any worse, there's real to be an even deeper layer to this iceberg. Another former fan of Dasha who's really close to her actually sends me a voice note that, that was sent from Dasha explaining her plan. I wanted to ask you something. If you have any like friends that you can trust, um, so we're obviously, so our thing is we're not gonna make a video back at Edwin. When his video comes out, all of our friends on Discord and everyone I can trust will flag it for harassment with like um, with certain words, like it has to be very neutral, not like as if we sent our people. Like Vincent is gonna send out a little uh, thing to everyone what it should sound like and what word it needs to, words it needs to contain for YouTube to see it. And we're trying to get his video taken down and then another video taken down professionally by an agency um and if he gets that three times then his channel is going to be deleted so once the video is taken down uh, is, is uploaded by him would you be down to like flag it on youtube i mean it's anonymous on youtube and write a little thing about how it's harassment it doesn't even have to be long and if you have any friends who could help us just flagging the video for harassment that would mean the world. Oh, Sears gonna tell his fans how to falsely flag a video? How thoughtful of him. Sometime later, Mina's channel was nearly taken down because a bunch of videos were removed by copyright claims. And the claims were interestingly enough, coming from uh, herself. As of right now, there isn't anything that definitively ties Dasha to this, but uh, come on, I think we all know what's happening here. And that's just sort of how it ends. Both Edwin's and Mina's channels stay up, and Sear continued to not publicly speak about this, but by far, the person who dealt the most damage was Dasha. She used to be in a group chat with other popular Instagram models. They turned against her after Edwin's videos. She had a bunch of fans ready to harass Mina until the end of time. They eventually turned against her, being the ones to, in the end, ironically, provide the most damning pieces of evidence against her. Her reputation was thoroughly dragged through the mud, and she eventually broke up with Sear. I think? I'm not 100% sure on that. All I'm saying is from Sears' mouth as I spoke to him the other day, Dasha is innocent. Now, what's the verdict? Dasha, I mean, <laughs> there, there really isn't much left to say. But what about Seer? It may be a popular stance to say that he was just strung along by his skinwalker girlfriend and that he's not to blame. No, on top of inspiring to falsely flag and take down Edwin's channel, it's looking very likely that Seer made up the story about his brother so he can get some excuse to kick Edwin out, and then he had, he had the balls. This is mind-blowing to me. He had the balls to go on a periscope and act shocked when Edwin left. I mean, you, you made it up. I guess that he finally got what he wanted from the start, to be an actor. Don't be like Sierra. Don't date someone who is absolutely insane, then defend their actions, fuck over your friend, 
keep doubling down, be too much of a pussy to give your own opinion and avoid conflict. He literally, I feel like he was the worst in the situation because he was a go-between between him, Edwin, and Dasha. He was too much of a little bitch boy to do anything. So, in the year 2021, where is everyone now? Let's check up on them. Well, Mina and Edwin are doing fine. Dasha returned last year to try and cancel Edwin with a bunch of sock puppet accounts, uh, unsuccessfully, might I add. And Seer, well, now we've come full circle. I wouldn't call the state that Seer is currently in a rebranding, but it definitely is a new chapter for him. Now, to be clear, I don't know if Seer still stands by his actions or how much he's changed over the course of these past few years. All I know is that he's chosen to sweep this under the rug. And uh, yeah, I don't really know how to end this. There's probably a lesson here somewhere, but uh, for me, it was just really interesting research. Actually, here, there is a moral to the story. Watch out for those skinwalkers, dude. They're lurking. Might even be hiding in plain sight as one of your favorite characters. Stay safe. Hey. My food. Admin outs Dasha for posting over 140 times in the thread alone, meaning more than 10% of the comments were hers. Posts included doxing Mina via a photo of her passport, unreleased semi-nude photos stolen from Mina's phone, alludes to Edwin being a pedo for dating a 20-year-old and defending Dasha. Imagine going to the length of wanting to ruin another influencer so much that you get your boyfriend to fly them over. You get them to essentially live with you. You go through their phone, you delete things, you emotionally toy with them, you manipulate them, and then you have the gall to turn around and say, oh, I didn't do anything. It was her who was toxic to me the whole time. And then he, he talked to me about what was going on with him and Edwin. And at the time, I had been told that Edwin was basically just talking a bunch of shit on him online and going after him and he was like the reason he's doing this is because i kicked him out of the house now he's blackmailing me some people have babies some people have puppies and other people have youtube channels okay that's their baby so what dasha and seer are trying to do is put a bullet in the head of edwin's puppy why do i call dasha a skinwalker well a skinwalker is someone who takes the skin of another and pretends to be them you see just when i thought dasha couldn't get any more weirder than she was i got a message from this photographer i shot with when i was 17. it says i texted you because i got a message on instagram that i thought i should show you and i said huh let's see it i'm kind of nervous no worries it's nothing bad i don't think he just recognized and then he sends me a screenshot Dasha is an abuser and I'm not gonna let her live it down. I know people believe, oh, this is exactly what she wants, but if I let this die down, she's simply gonna rebrand and become a different person and screw other people over. So we're gonna make like a documentary about how everything affected us and the truth.